Hello and welcome to Be Kind Connects. I'm your host, Shabnam Islam. On today's episode, we have animal and human rights activist, Gwena Hunter. Now, Gwena is the founder of Vegans of LA, a plant-based food bank providing accessibility to nourishing vegan foods to individuals and families in Los Angeles since 2015. She's also the founder of Vegans for Black Lives. Now, Gwena Hunter is a force to be reckoned with and her mission to better our communities while addressing, while addressing the intersectionality of the injustices we face as a society is the reason why she's making big changes in not only our Los Angeles community, but setting new standards all around. Gwena, it is a pleasure to have you on our show. Thank you so much. That was great. <laughs> Thank you. So I want to first lift up the curtain behind who Gwena Hunter is. I want to know about you before you transitioned into this work of veganism and outreach. Like, where were you born? Where were you raised? And how did culture actually impact your diet? Okay, thank you. So I was actually born in Alabama, a little tiny town you can walk through in about 10 minutes called uh, Greensboro. Um, and uh, I didn't live there long. And I was raised in Cleveland, Ohio, which is where that's where I became an adult. And, you know, I'm, I'm very influenced by the Cleveland culture. Um, it's odd because I didn't realize this until just a few years ago while being in this movement, I kept hearing the term uh, food deserts. And I thought about it and I said, wait a minute, I totally grew up and lived in a food desert um, my my entire life until I became like, I think 20 and moved into another uh, community. And I realized like we didn't even question, there was no name for it, it just, it was just normal. That's just how it was. So. Um, I had a Popeye's chicken, and so I ate a lot from Popeye's chicken, the convenience store across the street. Um, wasn't really into nutrition at all. That wasn't a conversation anyone in my community was having. Um, but there was a health food store, a little tiny one that was not far from where I lived. And sometimes I would walk to it and I would be curious about stuff that was made without um, meat. And I thought people, the word vegan wasn't in my... Um, wasn't in my world yet, but the word vegetarian was. And so I was always curious about how people could live like that. And I think I was about 14 and I bought a veggie burger. And this is in the, this is in the eighties. Okay. So I bought a veggie burger, made it. It was the most disgusting thing I had ever acquired. I was like, I can't like, absolutely not. <laughs> So that was like my little introduction and exit, like all within four <laughs> hours. But I always yeah. think that there was something in me deep down that knew that this was part of my path because the curiosity that I had about the lifestyle, even though I had uh, made the decision that I would never participate in it. So fast forward to about 2008, um, a friend of mine who was pretty religious um, had called me and said, hey, let's do the Daniels fast together. And the Daniels fast is basically where you're abstaining from any meat and dairy. Um, you are a vegan. It's, we did it for like 28 days. And for me, the purpose of doing it was to become more empowered, more manifesty, more powerful and, <clears throat> and all of that. And so um, I used to have extremely bad menstrual cycles. Like my life was planned around it. And during this time, as I'm on this Daniel's fast, abstaining from animal products, um, first of all, I'm feeling better. And I noticed that when my cycle came back on, there wasn't one cramp, not even a flutter. I didn't even know it was coming on. It ended in three days, no spotting. I was pleasant. I wasn't all broken out. And that enough for me was like, it's got to be the meat. And so I decided to just be on a vegetarian path uh, for like eight years, not knowing what the heck I was doing. I had nothing to do with animals. I just knew that I didn't have bad periods <laughs> as a result. And fast forward, <clears throat> I end up in Los Angeles and I would say February of 2016, I had a very supernatural experience um, in my dream state and waking state. So in the dream, I'm flying in the sky, as we do in our dreams, and I look down, I see this really beautiful green pasture. 
And in the pasture was this cow that was absolutely beautiful. And she looked at me and when she looked, our eyes connected and it was like some type of like tunnel. And I merged with her and I became the cow. And I experienced all of her entire consciousness, <clears throat> her life flashed before me. I felt everything as being her. So when I woke up out of the dream, I was very emotional and I was crying because I was like, oh my God, like, cause I could feel her love, how pure it was. And I'm like, oh my God, they love? And we eat them? Like, what a horror movie. And so as I'm like laying in the bed, I'm just like, did this really just happen? Did I eat something weird? This, like, I'm, <laughs> I'm a but also I give room for skepticism too, so that I can <laughs> have the <a> full balance. <laughs> And literally while I'm laying in the bed, I physically, while I'm awake, feel this warm sensation right over my heart. It felt like there was a little tiny heater and I didn't see anything. And something like, like nudged me to put my hand there. When I put my hand there, I was literally paralyzed with, there, there are no human words that I can use, but the closest thing is I could just say I was paralyzed with peace and acceptance and it was if it was warm and it was soft and like if I would have been asked do you want to stay here or do you want to go back to earth I'd be like I'm out of earth like take me to this because it felt so incredibly good and it lasted for like a few seconds and I knew that she gave me a piece of her heart and like that was it was letting me know this was real and so from that point on I was like I just gotta tell everybody don't eat the cows you know and I was kind of like a crazy vegan for a few minutes, um, or a, I would say about four months. And sorry, everybody's crazy. crazy vegan when they start. Everybody <laughs> is a crazy vegan when they start. But some don't. Some don't snap out of it. Some yeah, stay there. <laughs> and so I realized after four months, the way I was doing it, I was posting slaughter videos, the most graphic stuff I could find. It was like we got to stop this. But um, I realized after practice. You know, for me, the best route is love and compassion and examples. So throughout the years, I've learned different ways of how, and I'm always still learning different ways of how to communicate. And, you know, for me, <clears throat> the whole, um, and this is just for my particular person, I'm not saying this how everyone should be. I would love to see it, but I, for me, love and compassion is the way and kindness to um, total transformation and change. You can use logic. I believe logic is great because some people operate in that space, but with logic, you can create logic out of anything. You know, some people use logic to go back to not being vegan and things like that. So for me, um, love and kindness, and plus I, I just don't operate well when I'm crunk and mad and angry. It's just not good for my body. So, um, yeah, love and kindness is, is the way to, um, create change. And that's exactly what you did with that dream with the, and I, I like to see that, that story as like, um, an inner interaction with your true spirit animal. Uh, mm, when you, yeah. when you think about, when you think about Buddhism and, and, uh, how n not, not life really ends. It just transitions yes. right, to another being, to yeah. another time, um, and that interaction was so powerful that you allowed it to impact this current lifetime of yours, which I think is exactly what enlightenment is. Yes. And so what you've done now is you took a lifetime of working in other fields like casting and IT, and now you created Vegans of LA from that dream. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about Vegans of LA, this food bank, the very first vegan food bank. In LA. What? Yes. In LA, how, how did you make this happen? So honestly, um, well, one of the reasons that it's important to me when I first came to LA, um, I didn't really come here to live, I came here to visit, but through some turn of events and some decisions, I decided to live here and I wasn't prepared for how this would be out. Like my charm was gone for some reason. I couldn't get a job, like money was running out and I found myself kind of living in poverty, you know? Um, it was it was so crazy how I went from um, having abundance to renting someone's couch in their studio and sleeping on their couch for three months. Like, but I, I understand now how certain things happen to kind of help develop you in certain areas. 
So I remember having this one week where I literally had $5 for the week to eat. And so I'm like, and it was like this one of the scariest feelings. And thank God for 99 cent stores out here because they have, so you can get some great stuff out of the 99 cent store. And that's how I was able to survive. I got like a bag of rice. I got like a bag of pita and some avocados and a couple other things. And it, it worked out to where I was able to, to make it for that week. Um, so in that respect, I understand what it does to a person's psyche, what it does to their ability to manifest, what it does to their hopes goals and dreams if you can't even feed yourself so when you're in that low frequency of like how am I going to survive that survival mode and it's and it's really real <clears throat> for you it's it can be a challenge to rise out of that frequency and go into hope go into um you know just different levels of of bringing yourself into a world that you really you know live in the life of your dreams it's it so it, it chips away at that so I always thought, I'm like, wow, there would have been something like this for me, like a vegan food bank. And I could have, like, it takes away so much stress and so many layers and obstacles and doubts that you put in your mind because who envisions themselves as an adult not being able to feed themselves? So um, that's one area. Second, um, I worked for Vegan Outreach for almost five years, or maybe it was five years. And I had a lot of practice through them. We did so many different things. When I first got hired, we went to uh, HBCUs and talked to students and passed out um, booklets um, on campuses. And then it went from that to me working with different social justice organizations and sharing talks with them about being vegan in exchange for providing full meals. Then it went from that to tabling at different events and then during the pandemic is when um, I got involved with, uh, we started doing a, a vegan food aid program to where we would give uh, different social justice organizations produce. You know, we would be like a, a mobile food bank in a sense. And so we worked with like Black Lives Matter, Black Women Farmers of LA, um, Black Women for Wellness, the LGBT Center, <clears throat> all different, like probably about six or seven that I was in charge of here in LA. And I got to see the impact. We weren't telling people go vegan. We weren't constantly putting stuff in their face. We weren't hardly doing anything other than just showing up and providing produce and some, and most of the time hot meals as well. And so people had a chance to try things on us. They take all this produce home and people were saying, now I'm, I'm eating healthier. I'm doing, I'm cooking with more vegetables. I never did this before. You know, we were sometimes buying weird things like, um, oh, I forget the name of that fruit. Anyway, we have like stuff like star fruit. And then there's, oh, forget, there are these little things. They look like little berries with this little red shell. And people are like, what is this? I've never seen this in my life. And so pomegranates, not pomegranates. They're little and you peel them. Shoot. Lychees. Yes. <laughs> I'm from Bangladesh. Lychees are from Bangladesh. Okay. <laughs> So we brought some lychees and people were like, what the heck is this? And someone like, yeah, try one. And they're like, oh my God, this is so good. And then they're we so good. So I'm like the health benefits of them and things like that. So um, it was a beautiful experience because I got to see how people were, like some people were coming back and saying my diabetes is different or this is going on. I'm walking more because I'm cooking with all these vegetables. And I'm like, this is really making an impact. And we're just showing up. We're not saying go vegan. We're not saying the poor animals we're not putting any shame or guilt on people we're just showing up with this stuff we're just like here do what you need because you know obviously some people are going to go home and cook animals with it you can't tell people what not to do with it right i saw the beauty in it um so after a while because i was saying yes to everything i wanted to help every organization in la i kind of burnt myself out um okay. and i was okay. putting myself dead last and even then i wasn't even competing in that and so I'm like, I, I love this work because I'm like, I see that it's it's helpful and it's making an impact, but how can I do this without doing all of this? And so then it came to me the idea, let me see if there's any vegan food banks in Los Angeles. So I researched and I kept, and I couldn't find any. I'm like, that is so weird. It's like the vegan capital, you know, in a sense of the US and there's no vegan food banks. And so I put the thought out there to create one 
while I was healing from burnout. <laughs> so I'm like, let me get myself right. a little bit of time. But in the meantime, I just start creating all these intentions and visualizing and all this other stuff. And then once I was able to focus on creating the food bank, um, I overwhelmed myself with being obsessed with how and how much money I'd have to raise and I need to find a facility. I need to get a truck. I need to hire a couple of employees. And I'm like, and I had like zero dollars. And I'm like, where is all this going to come from? But I just kept getting this feeling like it's don't worry. But of course, I overrode that and was worried. <laughs> and and <laughs> one day I just decided, I said, you know what? Um, why am I putting so much effort in this mentally? I'm stressing myself out again. And I say, universe, I deserve this to come to me in such a wonderful way. Um, I deserve to not work hard. I deserve to let it just come to me. When it comes to me, make sure that I know it and I don't doubt it. But I need this to come to me easily because I'm I'm like driving myself. I'll never get this accomplished because I'll be so stuck on the house and all this other stuff. And oddly enough, a friend of mine that's part of Black Lives Matter had texted me and said, hey, there's this pastor I want you to meet. He's doing a program with um, students and regarding vegan food. He's looking for some black chefs. Can you help? I'm like, sure. Another person wants to pick my brain. So we met for lunch and we're talking and we're getting along. So great. This is a great, like not the typical pastor that you would be used to. And towards the end of the lunch, he's like, yeah, I also have a food bank. And I said, well, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to create a vegan food bank. I said, but I didn't know all the steps, all the stuff that goes into it. He said, well, instead of starting from scratch, why don't you take over part of mine? He's like, I already have the freezers, the refrigerators, the trucks. I have the employee. And I was, it was like, oh, like I heard <laughs> angel. <laughs> yeah, the angel singing. <laughs> and I knew, but I knew something was special about him before meeting him. Something just said there's something special about this man. So when he said that, I just knew I'm like, I can't, it literally fell on my lap. I'm literally sitting here. And it just fell into my lap and we've been working together ever since. And it's been, um, it was, it was, it's one of the greatest manifestations <laughs> that I've ever had because of just how it came in so easily. Not to say that there weren't certain struggles and learning lessons and things like that, but the way it came in was just so, yeah. So how would you say, you know, you were talking briefly about the impacts you've made in the community, how people like maybe reversing their diabetes, they feel good, they have more energy, they're yeah. losing weight, they're motivated, and they just love the accessibility to fresh fruits, vegetables. But how has your life changed after creating Vegans of LA? I would say like certain parts of me, um, I would say activated more, um, becoming vegan. I was always, I've always been kind of like activated on the supernatural side, um, a little more than most people, but it was like, once I became, um, vegan, especially once I encounter cows, because every so often I get like a new message from them. And so I've had conversations with cows, um, and special, special messages. So when you say they're like spirit animal, I'm like, yeah, I think that that is that it's exactly what that is. So, um, and I don't know if I contributed all to being vegan. Maybe I don't know, but I feel like my evolution as a human, it just keeps. And it's like every time I think I get to a certain level, I'm like, okay, this is how things operate. Then I have another awakening or another form of enlightenment, and then I'm like, ah. Oh. So it just keeps, and lately it's been happening really fast. It's almost like slow down. <laughs> so yeah, just having a lot of like um, experiences with enlightenment, but also too, for me, it's like, I go through, like I've been the vegan that's done some of the shaming before. I've done like, so it's not like I'm just coming here on this, you know, oh, I'm flapping my angel wings from here. It's like, no, I've done some of the stuff that I can be judgmental about or some things and I'm like, hey, maybe if we just, so I'm speaking from a lot of a uh, first person experience, but it's been an incredible journey that you could have never told me I'd be on. I thought vegans were crazy, extreme, unnecessary. It's like, why are you taking, you don't want to eat, you don't want to do milk? Like y'all are just doing way too much. <laughs> y'all just, and so I just thought they were just like really weird people. 
And and I guess in a sense we are, you know, we're different. And so when I got involved in the in the movement and just saw so many, I still see so many different aspects of how it operates and how you got the extremes over here, and then you got this over there, and then you it's just like any political um movement you have all of your different moving pieces but what i am learning still learning it but what i'm learning is that all those moving pieces are important even the ones we don't like even the ones we judge because even though i can't stand the shaming sometimes a person may be attracted to that lesson in that way and they may need they may want to be shamed in order to get the message so i'm learning to try not to be so judgmental of the different aspects of the movement and just let people be and do my own thing. I love how you talk about the movement and how you've changed as well, particularly from beginning to end. Uh, and that that trajectory, that journey is what's really important. And I think as a black female entrepreneur who's making really large impacts in the vegan scene, um, you've seen things that we've formally defined as success, like okay. what, what what makes you six what your old self thought what makes you successful but how would you define success today um i would say today i define it one it's not outside of myself it's how i feel about myself and that took a lot a lot of years of being burnt out to finally figure it out that um success is how i feel about myself The other stuff is just extra, you know, and I don't even look at the food bank as like a success. Um, It's just providing something that is a birthright. So if the government won't do it, they want to keep playing their games and I'll be the government and then I'll do it instead of waiting for someone to tell me it's okay to do this or to make these changes. At the end of the day, all of us are on the same level as human beings. We're all human beings and we play into these roles of power we play into these roles of hierarchy we play into all this stuff and we keep this structure going all of us keep it going when we talk about white supremacy when we talk about minorities when we talk about injustices um in certain ways we keep this whole thing alive and keep it going so for me success is one realizing that um and then two just playing my part in restoring heaven back on earth, so to speak, whatever your definition of heaven is, just restoring peace and unity. I'm really, really about uh, planetary unity. So that's more conversations that I wanna start having going forward so that it incorporates everything. Um, So yeah, so for me, it's like just as much as I can be loving to myself and it's still a journey, I'm still learning how to put myself first and how to take care of myself and all those good things. So, and I see how far I've come. So to me, that's the, that's the success is that, um, I'm no longer allowing myself to get burnt out. I'm saying no, um, (laughs) to things I'm saying no to narratives and boxes that people like to put me in. And so just keeping that awareness to me is the best success I can have. And so how can you explain to people why the intersectionality, the discussion of the intersectionality of veganism, human rights, animal rights, uh, accessibility, um, social justice, and planetary unity, as you say, how is that at the forefront of your work? How does that all work together? Well, because these things are all like, you know, unity, food, abundance, shelter, clothing. These are birthrights. These are things that you have to like work hard for should have a job to have like that's a whole scam money is an entire just system that we've constructed and i'm not trying to sound all whole tappy or anything like that but it really is so food is a birthright or it's a human right however you want to you want to deem it and so since we're playing these games of scarcity i'm like okay there's these sources that i can tap into that will you know donate food uh, I may have a budget here to create more. Let's just, let's put the sovereignty and food back into the world. And I don't need to shout it and protest and march and scream and we can do all that too, but I'm just doing it because that's whatever part of my calling for this particular moment is calling me to do. And I don't remember what the question was. 
<laughs> no, what I was saying is like, how do you explain to people? Because I think sometimes when we talk about intersectionality, like, you know, um, of, of things, of social justice, some communities may see it as us, as us being divisive. Whereas really what we're trying to say is that if we don't not acknowledge these divisive practices that are in our systems and structures, how do we become, you know, united on a planetary front? And so I think oftentimes when we try to explain veganism, sometimes we get confronted with people that are not seeing the connect the connecting of the dots. So how do you go about showing people that really when you have this discussion, it's about inviting them in, not pushing them away? Absolutely. And that has taken, and I'm still learning different techniques, but over the years I've gotten cursed out. I've gotten called Nick. Like I've had a few experiences that have taught me how to kind of uh, curve my conversation based on who it is I'm speaking to. And one of the things that I like to kind of wake people up when I'm talking to them, because uh, some people are just completely disconnected and it's, it's just, the, it's the programming. Some of us are, are, programmed a little harder than others. Some of us just need a little jolt. Some of us just haven't heard the right words to kind of uh, activate that awakening. Um, but one of the things that I, I say that seems to really work on no matter who it is, one, I like to ask people about suffering, if they've ever experienced suffering. And I've never met a human, uh, an adult <clears throat> that doesn't um, know what it is in some form, whether it's physical, emotional, uh, mental, and from that conversation, um, I lead people down a, a visualization kind of of what we do to the animals. Because I've learned, do not talk about animal rights in its pure form in front of people that are, you know, feeling that they're fighting for their rights. <clears throat> it's not the, <laughs> the best segue. So one of the things that I say to people is, you know, with the animals, like, it's so weird. Like, we eat their legs. We eat their butts. We eat their arms. We eat their necks. Uh, we eat their breasts. Like, isn't that crazy? Like, we eat another animal's breasts, and we call it white meat, or we call it healthy. Uh, we eat their feet, their wounds. And then we go inside their bodies, and we eat their organs. You know, we eat their livers, and we eat their hearts, and their ribs. We crack open their ribs, and we eat their ribs. So people start making these faces. And they're like, oh, and I'm like, well, you know, I'm not making this up. Like, we do that. Um, and then we're not done. Then we take the skin off their bodies, and we wear them. And I'm like, it, and so by that time, everybody's like looking at each other. And it's like, this sounds disgusting. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna sound like a blood cult. You know, that's what I would think if I came to this planet, never visited before. And I'm like, they do what? <laughs> you know, the type of things that they do. So, and no one can say that I'm being judgmental. I'm just stating facts. Like, you know, with steak, we, we call it steak. You know, we don't talk about it's their stomach or it's, you know, inside their body. You know, like we use these these little cute words, um, bacon. You know, bacon is is ba those are babies. You know, so and I tell them too, like we eat babies, we eat mothers, we eat fathers, we eat siblings, uh, we eat somebody's parents, and these animals are having birth through their vagina just like a human woman. They're carrying their babies in their stomachs just like us. So. I kind of plant the seed to make people start to question because especially if I'm talking to black and brown communities, we're already where we're questioning the government or we're questioning, you know, like, oh, you know, we're knowing that everything isn't as honest as we think it is. And so I'm like, well, don't stop there. Think about the whole system of food. Think about the whole system of animals. When I went vegan, one of the things that happened after that uh, dream I saw this video called Dairy is Effing Scary by Aaron Janice. And I understood then how we obtain their milk. And when I'm watching the video, I saw slavery. It wasn't like, oh, this poor cow, this poor animal, because I had already connected with her because of the dream, like as a female. So I didn't look at her as like, I'm human, you're an animal. Like I was already connected with her as a female. And so I saw slavery. I saw rape. I saw kidnapping of her child. Um, I saw depression, like, you know, her body being sold and used. I'm like, that's the same thing that 
It's the same blueprint, same exact blueprint. And I dare someone to disprove it and tell me that I'm, that I'm wrong. It's the exact same blueprint. And so when you kind of help people see things in certain ways, um, they start connecting their own dots. I love that you say that because what we are seeing in evidence is that the vegan veganism movement, plant-based movement is growing tremendously among the African-American community in the United States. Alone. But it's interesting that you say this because I kind of, I have, this is my question. Like when you have black and brown members of the community that come to the vegans of LA food bank, do they ever question the foods that you give them? Like, oh, like, yeah. the, oh what's this? Well, like, and, and for the most part, they're all very um, grateful and accepting, but sometimes they're like, nah, you know, like what the, and I get that with, it's so crazy. People be like, um, do you know what's in Beyond Meat? It's got canola, it's got this, it's like, do you know what's in the- What's bed? in your meat? <laughs> it's like, you know, okay, so Beyond Meat isn't a health food, got it. But at the same time, have you ever questioned, I tell people, like when you get like burgers or these things in these styrofoam containers with the plastic on it, you don't see ingredients. It doesn't tell you, even water has a list of ingredients in it. This, it doesn't mm -hmm. tell you the antibiotics that's in it. It doesn't tell you all the drugs that's in it. It doesn't tell you all the salt. It doesn't tell you none of that stuff. And I'm like, you all assume that just because it didn't come from an animal that you can't trust it. I'd be thinking the other way, like look up how hot dogs are made, look at a video of slaughter to, to table and see that whole process. So yeah, it's so weird. That's why, like I said, I'm learning to mind my business that I'll be them bust the blood vessel on the people sometimes. <laughs> Name would be even still in there. She's still in there. She just, she just a little zen right now. <laughs> but I think that's, that's the growth and trajectory of being a vegan. Like you have to grow. Not a single cell in your body is the same as it was yesterday. Right. And if you're not continuously growing, then we're doing ourselves and our communities a disservice. Right. But I, I do love, I do love your honesty because, you know, oftentimes when we think like, oh well, you're getting free food, you're just going to be grateful. But the human, <laughs> the human being in itself is is meant to be like, what the hell? Yeah, I'm question um, this. Yeah. Um, so what do you recommend? Um, what I would love to hear here is uh, what are the most common recommendations you give to the black and brown community members that feel a little uh, deterred from trying a plant-based lifestyle? Um, well, one is to ease into, because if anything new you're getting ready to try, if someone's just taking you and throwing you right into it, it, it's, it feels intimidating and too much. So it's like, you know what, why don't you just try one meal? Try one meal without animals. And quit looking at um, vegetables as sides. They're not sides, it's food. <laughs> so don't think in terms of like a main and a side, it's all food. So I'm like, just try one meal and, and see. And then, you know, try one animal at a time, you know, instead of, if you, if you feel like doing it all at once is too overwhelming, then intro yourself into it. And as you go on, if you have hiccups and you make mistakes, be gentle with yourself, be loving with yourself. Don't feel like, oh my God, I messed up. I might as well, like, nope, start, it's nobody's business. You don't need to tell anybody or announce it. Just, if you fall, just get back up and just keep going. So one, being gentle with yourself is the most important thing. And then two, just experiment, have fun. Like this is, it could be fun. Yeah, we talk about the dark parts of veganism or as far as like what's going on with the animals, but that doesn't have to be your focus. Maybe your focus, if you decide to come into the living, you wanna play and have a good time with it and promote stuff, have a good time, have fun. It is a journey and the journey isn't always perfect, but the journey is the journey. So have a good time with an experiment have some friends over, you all play it around, create some videos, but make sure that you're having a good time and that you're not taking it so seriously that you're becoming almost toxic to yourself. Cause I've been in that area too, where it's like, you can, you can always be your, your worst, um, your worst critic. So have a good time and it educate. YouTube is amazing. You can veganize anything and watch somebody doing it. Um, Read books, subscribe to people, but just make sure that, um, like you were saying earlier, as you 
hit these different levels and you, you go into these different steps, find out something new. I know when I got involved, I had learned about feathers. I never even questioned a feather. And then I watched this video and I learned how we get feathers from the animals. And I was like, oh my God, I'm done. So just keep evolving in your journey and keep learning more because I've been doing this, I think it's like seven years now, there's still something to learn. So just keep learning and have a good time. And it as as long as we've been vegan, it's never been long enough, right? I know. It's never been long enough. I know. <laughs> no. That was the thing I had to forgive myself because I'm like, because I remember getting nudges throughout life. Like now I look back and I'm like, oh, that was a nudge right there and ignoring the nudge. But I think I had to develop my personality in a certain way so that when I did get involved, um, yeah, so I'm learning to just accept that it happened, you know, February 16th at 2 p.m., you know, uh, 2016, because that was the assigned date. So <laughs> that's right. And you handled that assignment. We'd like to say so, Gwenna, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time, for dropping your knowledge bombs, for your grace and your kindness. I think the way that you communicate about how to transition to a plant based lifestyle is so easy and poignant and I can see why people see you as a change maker so thank you so much for your time well, thank you so much for that I appreciate it <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen that wraps up this episode of Be Kind Connects with the incredible Gwenna Hunter the founder of Vegans of LA to learn more about Gwenna and the Vegans of LA food bank please visit vegansofla.com and thank you so much for tuning into this episode and to watch the many more that we have please go to www.bekindconnects.com. Oh, 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 oh,